Top of the morning to YouTube. Shay Eric here. Today I'm actually going to be showing you all of the locations for the unique monsters in Final Fantasy 13 Part 2. Now, all of these monsters you can only get once, so do not go around infusing them with other things or infusing them into other things because you won't be able to get them back in one playthrough. So, first up, we have Rangda, and this monster is actually in New Bodham. You will need the Fragment skill Improved Moogle Throw, which you'll get from the Mystic in Serendipity. So, to get Rangda, you have to go to New Bodum 003 AF. Now, it might take you a couple of throws to get some of these guys, but these are the locations down to a T. So, go to the pier east of Nora House, and just chuck that Moogle straight into the ocean, as far as you can. And after a couple of tries, you should get it. So here's some of the stats of it, and I didn't realize that all the recent monsters you catch usually go to the bottom of this list. So I don't really pay that much attention to the monster stats and stuff because I just use whatever monster I feel like using for that battle. Next up we have Cactarina who is also in New Bodum 003 AF. Now this one is next to the Time Gate in the impact site so you want to go to round about that spot on the map and just chuck the moogle over the ridge all of these monsters will be in sort of chronological order the when you can pick them up in the story even though there isn't really a, a storyline there is a certain sequence to get the certain maps so here is some of the biddle abilities of Cactarina and for a medic I usually use the Flaninator, which you end up getting in Augusta Tower. So, next up is Liak, which is in Sunleth Waterscape, 300 AF. I didn't actually realize which one you have to throw it at, but you need to throw your Moogle at the two mini flans. Now, it's not actually these two, it's the two mini flans that are further down the track, nearer to the, the south. So, of course, with the improved Moogle throw, if you do throw your Moogle and you don't find anything, you do have a chance of picking up some adornments or some fruit or even a couple of remedies and stuff. But the flans that you do want to throw them at are just south of here, and I'll spot them in a second. So, as I was saying, these are all unique monsters. I wouldn't infuse them into any other monsters because there will be no way of getting them back. The only exception is the Gigantors, which I'll show you on Archolite's Deep. Them you can get three times, but you can only have one of them in your party at once. So, round about that position, you want to throw your Moogle in between those two flans. And you want to make sure that in the Fragment skills you do have the Improved Moogle Throw activated, or else you won't get them. So, here are some of the stats of Liak and I really don't like these guys usually my Crystarian pack is made up of the chocobos the gold and the silver along with the bugaboos which you also get from the Archolite Steep here so next up is Chichu Archolite Steep and the time period is unknown but really what you want to do is you want to go next to this Cactor statue and throw your Moogle into the red flowers just there. I'm not sure whether the distance away from the red flowers really dictates anything, but I just wanted to make sure I got it straight in there. So just throw him right into that patch there. And he's one of those little sort of Ocho things, but a tiny version of it. So it's a Chichu. And also in the Archolite Steep we have Nanochu which is on the middle island in the Clearwater Springs. The weather conditions don't actually matter whenever you're getting these monsters. I was just trying to get the character stones while I was trying to get them as well. So yet again, it doesn't really matter whereabouts you throw them on this island, but it might take you a couple of attempts to get them. See, I picked up a black chocobo figurine there, so it might not actually work a couple of times there's like a 10% chance of getting it and I think I pick it up on this throw right here so 
Third time's the charm. Nanacho. I really like using the, the really big monsters that have a sort of presence on the field anyway whenever you use them. So it is a, a synergist and I don't really use synergists as monster companions anyway. Yet again on the Archelite Steep we have Gigantor. Now this isn't actually one you obtain from the Moogle throw but it's a monster you fight and you do have a hundred percent chance of getting the crystal after the fight but once you interact with that statue this thing will pop up it is a bit of a a bugger to beat you'll probably need a good sentinel which in my case is a silver chocobo I haven't upgraded it and I'll show you where to get that next up so try and protect yourself from this guy's thousand needles with the sentinel it'll end up attacking that and of course your silver chocobo won't be able to attack but with a pretty decent team you could probably take this down with just a commando commando sentinel I've actually I'm actually doing all of these post story so most of my team are relatively high levels apart from the monsters so you can only get this thing three times so the three times that you fight it during the storyline that's it you can't get it again you will need to beat these guys though to get the last unique monster Twilight Odin because you'll need to use the time gate and get to the Vile Peaks I'm not too sure I think it's the 10 AF Vile Peaks that the Archelite Steep one goes to and it is you'll need a wild artifact to be able to open it as well so as you can see here I'm just using commando to try and take down most of its health because there's not really any point in me staggering it so it's a hundred percent crystal drop you'll always get it but once you use those three or fight the three gigantors you won't be able to get it back and most of the adornments end up increasing in size if you use them on it so it still looks pretty cool not too sure what the size is on the actual field whenever you use it in battle though right so this one is the silver chocobo this is one of the best chocobos you can use for the chocobo races in serendipity it's in the alternative academia which you'll end up going to for the main storyline you won't see me pick it up here because I already picked it up but you need to throw your moogle into the middle of that holographic projection and you have to have the improved moogle through with all of these monsters but the silver chocobo is one of the best you'll have to use in serendipity and I'll show you a video of how to actually increase it to get the best stats for it. Next up we have the Golden Chocobo. Now this one you don't actually need the improved Moogle throw for, but it is the closest you'll or sorry, the the I can't think of the word now. The most recent time you'll be able to get it is after the main storyline. Now I've already picked it up so you won't see me get it here but it's in this position in a dying world 700 AF so all you need to do is do the Moogle hunt, hunt round about there and you'll see like a a square box pop up with the golden chocobo inside it so this one you'll actually have to return to a dying world or run around after the main storyline involving this part of the timeline so this is actually Cacturama in a dying world 700 AF so you want to go relatively close to Chocolina and just chuck the Moogle anywhere around there you can't really see the crystal at all but he picks it up not too sure whether you'll have to do that a couple of times or not but I ended up getting most of them after one or two attempts so this is just a grey tiny Cactuar which is a medic and I really haven't used any of these monsters at all. So last up we have Twilight Odin. You will get this monster after completing one of the fragment quests. You will have to fight it twice and you'll obtain it after the, the second attempt. You'll need both of the Val Peak the Val Peak storylines unlocked. So one of them is from the Archelite Steep 
and I'm not too sure where the other one is. But once you do the storylines for those two places, you'll end up having to fight this guy. This guy can be a bit of a pain in the backside. What you want to try and do is buff yourself. Use your routine for hard bosses. Buff yourself up. Stagger it as quickly as you can. So I usually use the Tri Disaster paradigm, which is Ravager, Ravager, Ravager. And then just try and drive that chain gauge up as high as you can and switch to the Cerberus paradigm, which is three commandos. I always have the Grimoire hat equipped onto the main character so that any time that I really need to heal the party, all I have to do is use a potion. So once you use that potion, it does heal quite quite a bit of health. But this guy, you will need to buff yourself a couple of times, and there will be some close calls if you're not a high level. Bokaboo Ace is a really good Ravager to have in your party. His Feral Link Spirit Infusion puts, I think, all of the buffs onto your team and heals some health. And if you can, it will help you a bit to have the the special abilities of Noel and Sarah, which is, as you can see here, the Ultima, Ar Ultima Arrow, and I think it's the, I'm not too sure what his skill, I think it's like Ultima Harpoon or something like that. You can correct me on that one, I'm pretty sure that's wrong. But anyway, that's the first time you fight him, so you have to fight him and then return to the, I think this is 10 AF? No, this is 200 AF, yeah. So you fight him first in 10 AF, and then you return to 200 AF to finish off the fight. This one will be harder than the first one. At a certain point in the match, he'll start to use his ultimate attack, Sandet Sandetsku, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not too good on my my Asian languages, but yeah, it can be a bit of a bugger. It does deal quite a bit of damage I think, or I'm not too sure if it's an instant kill, but I didn't let him use it in this one because I knew if he did I'd probably not end up getting it in one go. So with the ultima arrow what you want to do is stagger him first and then use it because that drives up the chain gauge quite a bit. And then just grind on him as usual. Try and get the chain gauge up as fast as you can. If you get the commando to attack first and use power chain or something then the chain gauge itself won't decrease as fast as it normally does and then what you want to do is just switch between tri disaster and attrition to drive the chain gauge up and heal yourself so here I sort of panic because I lose my monster and then almost again This sounds really funny, sped up, it's just chipmunked. So, 5 star rating. You might have to be quite a high level. As I've told you before, I'm doing most of this post story. And I won't spoil any of the cutscenes that actually happen here, so I'll cut them out. But those are all the unique monsters that are in Final Fantasy 13 Part 2. You won't be able to obtain them again. And I wouldn't recommend infusing them into anything else. I will release a video showing you how to build up the Silver Chocobo to win all the Serendipity races and also a video on where all the wild artifacts are but as I've already played the game and needed the wild artifacts to carry on the story at some points I've already obtained them so you won't actually see me obtaining them again I'll just show you the location of them so if there is anything you guys want me to show you leave a comment below or send me a message and I'll try and get that done for you as soon as possible. So I hope you you guys learned something new. I hope you get all the monsters that you need to because you will need them for one of the fragment quests and I shall see you guys later.